see that boat out there? For nearly 70 years, that old river boat has been a familiar sight to the people that live and work on the rivers of the upper Midwest. That boat out there is the Dredge William A. Thompson. I've seen it up and down the Mississippi River for most of my adult life. I've often thought there must be a lot of history there. What kind of work does it do? And who are the people that work there? Now, after nearly seven decades on the river, the dredged William A. Thompson is about to retire. Now is a good time for you folks to get to know her a little bit better. Come on, let's go out to the dredge. Roger that, Captain. Rivers in the upper Midwest are notoriously hard to navigate, especially the upper Mississippi River, with a towboat pushing 15 loaded barges that carry over 22,000 tons of cargo. The upper Mississippi is one of three segments on the river, running 854 miles from St. Anthony Falls down to the mouth of the Ohio River at Cairo, Illinois. The upper Mississippi floodplain is wide, as much as two and a half miles at some points, so the river can be shallow. The sediment it carries doesn't flow continuously all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico. Sand and silt builds up naturally in the backwaters and channels. Well, the waterway was divided by numerous bars and islands. They distributed large portions of the flow through chutes and sloughs and secondary channels. The channel was obstructed by snags and rocks. Its width was exceedingly variable. At low water, it was impossible to navigate some of the rapids. Up until the 1860s, the Mississippi River is the primary shipping uh, channel for the Midwest. It's the only way to get bulk commodities into and out of the region. If the Mississippi wouldn't have been developed into the navigation channel it is today, there was this real concern by Midwesterners that if railroads could dominate with no serious competition from other sources like the Mississippi River, that they would charge such exorbitant prices major businesses and industries would not locate in the Midwest. The Army Corps of Engineers first tackled the problem in 1866 when Congress authorized the creation of a four-foot navigation channel on the Upper Mississippi. Three years later, the St. Paul District of the Corps had completed its survey, obtained a dredge and snag boat, and began clearing the channel. To create a deeper channel, the Corps used the power of the river itself, constructing rock and willow brush wing dams and closing dams to force water down a single, narrower passage. In 1866, Congress authorized the first major navigation project for the whole Upper Mississippi. It's called the Four Foot Channel Project. The problem with that project was there were just too many sandbars in the Mississippi River. Every time the river rose or fell, it would shift those sandbars around again, and, and the river would close up for anything deeper than a 24-inch draft, for example. And so the Corps of Engineers got the idea that they could build wing dams, which would basically constrict the Mississippi. And by constricting it, it would, it would flow faster and be able to cut through those sandbars. And it's really the most important um, reshaping of the Mississippi since the glaciers. So navigation boosters thought that a deeper channel, a six-foot channel, would bring commerce back to the Mississippi. The six-foot channel failed as well. And again, the reason is railroads could guarantee shipping year-round. As shipping on the shallow upper Mississippi River declined, it grew on the lower river, where towboats and barges with eight and a half foot drafts could move bulk cargo cheaply and reliably. A number of factors came to, together during the 19 teens and 20s to really give rise to a new navigation movement on the Mississippi. And then finally, the Interstate Commerce Commission put the Midwest on a dry land basis. They said the Mississippi only represented the potential for competition to railroads, not the reality. And so the Midwest had to make a decision, do we want to be landlocked or do we want to be connected to the world? The answer to that decision is we want to be connected to the world and so they started another new movement that would lead to the locks and dams on the Mississippi. About 10,000 years ago, this valley was about 200 feet deeper than it is now. But the valley floor has been rising for 10,000 years because the tributaries have steeper gradients than the Mississippi. They bring in more material than the Mississippi can remove. And when we built obstructions in, in the river, that includes wing dams, closing dams, and the lock and dam system itself, 
but also highways and other things, those structures cause the river bed to rise more rapidly. So even though we raised the water level with the nine foot channel project and made, made it deeper, the bottom of the river is still coming up, necess necessitating dredging. To accomplish the nine foot channel, the Corps continued dredging, but also began constructing the lock and dam system we have today. The locks and dams created stable navigation pools so that larger tows could operate reliably on the river. With the lock and dam system where you're holding water back, all that sediment is going to come into each one of those reservoirs behind the dam and it's going to start settling out and it's going to create a very level bottom all the way across the reservoir unless that material is dredged out and the channel is kept clear. And so you needed a modern dredge to, to really handle that. And what you needed was some kind of a conveyor belt or, or vacuum system that could take out huge amounts of sediment all at once. The Army Corps of Engineers commissioned the Dravo Corporation in Pittsburgh to build a large pipeline cutter head dredge to meet the demands of maintaining the channel. The Thompson was completed in 1937. It made the journey to its service base in Fountain City, Wisconsin, and spent nearly 70 years dredging up and down the rivers of the upper Midwest. But in the late 1800s, the steamboats were in competition with railroads that had flanked the river at first and then finally bridged the river. Congress feared that with the railroads monopolizing heavy traffic in the nation's midsection, that the United States was, was very vulnerable to having only one means of, of commercial transportation like that. So they encouraged the Nine Foot Channel Project as a way to compete. Certainly part of the prosperity of the river cities is due to commercial traffic on the Mississippi. We have to comp compete in the international market uh, with the moving of commodities into and out of the United States. And the fact is, is we have to move those commodities faster and cheaper to be competitive. And the bottom line, that results into the cost you pay for your automobile, for your appliances, your home electronics, and even the cost of the loaf of bread that you buy at your local grocery store. More than 80 million tons of grain, coal, petroleum, and other goods move on the rivers of the upper Mississippi River system every year. About the only time that Thompson wasn't working to keep a thousand miles of shipping channel clear was when winter set in and the rivers were frozen over. 